Let's talk about all the funny things. Looks like our work days are over. COVID is coming to an end. Wearing down the pin. Let's get some for the end of the COVID. The virus that they couldn't quite kill. The virus that they let out of them. Somehow escaped the back door of that um, clinic in Wuhan. <laughs> that shit got out, man. I feel like that shit was human beforehand. <laughs> Motherfucker was like, yo man, I don't know what happened, bro, but like, I went on Facebook Live right before I had it, he was like, man, I already got me my top of this thing, man, and I'm like barely human anymore. And think once I get to a crop at normal, I'm gonna fucking slip out of the air vent and go in and fix the whole world, man. <laughs> this is like some homeboy's revenge. You know, like, the prison system finally came back to bite us in the ass. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> the mutated homie turned out, turned into fucking COVID-19. Infected the planet. What the hell? <laughs> the bottom line being, this is the top of the line. Here we are. I'm glad you all made it. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Watching at home. Just keep watching and then go outside and see the beautiful sky. <laughs> is this not easily the best venue in San Francisco? Hello. <laughs> Look, at this. Look at this view. It's like the Ravens of Wichita. We'll either fly by at any moment. <laughs> You hear them call the Ravenous on the mountaintop or the what, or fucking what is it? Hell. Uh oh. Somebody sat for me. Uh, that that quick tower looking thing, you know, the Ravenous world or whatever. Salesforce! 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 Yes, thank you so much. Okay, then then uh. Let's talk about mostly mm, the things I try to get to a level and make some jokes, you know. I can't do it. It's very difficult because I've realized that the things that would make people laugh at me is funny because it's true, yeah, type of thing. I gotta read life out of this guy, you know, how, you know, funny because it's true type of thing. But also, and then I started making notes of people laugh, and I wasn't kidding, <laughs> and now I'm just offended. <laughs> I'm trying to realize they're laughing at me or with me, etc., etc. Money buns, Tom, yes. Uh -huh. Wow. Wow. Happy birthday to this guy! Yeah, that guy! Yeah, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that guy. 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 Yeah, for the sake of everybody. <laughs> save the world. People save the world. Big farmers in their laboratory right now. I'm like, this guy's got a pro. He's kind of scared of everything. Like, big farmers in the state. You know, he's trying to see what happened. Equals. So this will be the last time I see you, thankfully. <laughs> Shit. Uh, hmm. All right, well, thank you very much. I want to get it started. Very first comedian of this wonderful evening here at JW's Tiki Tiki. Please welcome. Give it, give it up for who's up next? Who's up next? <laughs> <laughs> Is a banana in my pocket. 
<laughs> That's right! Buckle up, we're doing banana jokes. A bunch of them. I don't like to split them up. All right, will you hold this for me? You're welcome. Okay. And you know, y'all aren't laughing because you don't realize that the banana is the original funny fruit. Think about it. Charlie Chaplin's not out there slipping on apple skins. No, sir. Bananas. An apple, that's a serious fruit. You know, we eat one every day to keep the doctor away. So, a banana a day must make you a funnier comedian. <laughs> it's, it's working. <laughs> and I, I find that prospect pretty appealing. <laughs> and so I, I have been uh, putting a lot of bananas down there. It's happening. <laughs> and I realized that a lot of thought actually goes into purchasing bananas. And whether you know it or not, you have a banana strategy. Think about it. On the spectrum, from green to brown, where do you prefer your bananas? Green. Oh, we have green out there. Green. Yes, yes. Dark yellow. Dark yellow. Okay, okay, so almost brown. I was expecting all of you to say yellow because that is the obvious answer. But uh, bananas are yellow for like 10 fucking seconds. You blink and then they're fucking mush. And uh, unlike the avocado, at least the banana is, you know, kind enough to show you on the outside. <laughs> You don't have to pick it up every day and mush it around and be like, are you there yet? Whisper sweet nothings and, and hopes it gives you hints that it's time. No, the banana is very forthcoming. It's, it's comedic. <laughs> it's bold. And you know, once you figure out where you land on the color spectrum, you then have to cross-reference that with your banana craving forecast. How many bananas are you gonna want this week? Will it be warm enough to make a smoothie? How willing are you to turn your mistakes into bread? <laughs> <laughs> Once you have uh, purchased your bananas, there is still more strategy to it. You know, because uh, uh, as a woman, it's uh, difficult for me to just go out and uh, shove a banana down my throat. That's a uh, premium content I save for my own fans. <laughs> and uh, private events. I'm available for birthday parties and bar mitzvahs. <laughs> no, instead I peel it bit by bit and pick it off and pop it in my mouth. And uh, I uh, have a boyfriend for now. <laughs> I like him shit, but he has a banana eating strategy that borders on irreconcilable differences. <laughs> he completely strips the banana, takes the time to peel the little stringy things off, and then just sets it down fucking anywhere. It don't matter. On top of the kitchen counter, in the unmade bed, on the back of the toilet tank, he is fucking ruthless with the banana eating. <laughs> and I can't handle it with how much thought that goes into my banana buying. It's just so beyond me. And he's, he's really living in the here and now. You know, because yeah, everything happens in real time. Except for uh, Zack Snyder's cut of Justice League. If that movie <laughs> happened in real time, it would have only taken 45 minutes. <laughs> And uh, I can sense some people not laughing out there because you're all you're all fucking thinking, well, Jack Schmider's cut of Justice League was better than Josh Wheaties. <laughs> and you know what? It's like saying at the restaurant they offered me the turd and the polished turd, and clearly I went with the polished turd. In the end, it's still a fucking piece of shit. I don't need 20 minutes of slow motion cyborg running. That's just fucking walking, okay? Don't need it. And speaking of other things to watch that have just been going on for way too long, new season of Bachelorette aired this week. Woo-hoo! Yeah. And 
and uh, I can tell you, COVID is officially fucking over. I don't need to hear it from the president. CDC can sit this one out. After months and months of not being allowed to leave my house without covering my mouth, the amount of face sucking that went down on that episode <laughs> was borderline pornographic. <laughs> <laughs> And that's not a problem. <laughs> I'm sex positive. That's why I let people pay me to eat bananas. Like, I'm welcomed in that world. <laughs> I'm just saying there's there's a little bit more real world in The Bachelor than I think I initially gave it credit for. I heard a lot of things on that show that uh, I heard during lockdown. Like, uh, I don't understand what's going on. Please, can someone explain what's happening? And, uh, I don't, I don't think I can do this anymore. <laughs> and, and that one I'm hearing so much about working from home, about parenting, about existence. We're done! <laughs> Can't do it anymore! The only people I think who are still excited about lockdown are squatters. And uh, before San Francisco, I didn't even know what the fuck a squatter was. That was an unknown concept to me. And now I know like five people who have some sort of squatter presence in their life. And uh, these people are my friends, so I call them by their names. But I'm curious what you guys would call people who uh, live in a residence with a squatter. Squatties? Squat tires? If you're a squatter, does that make the other person the lunger? Can't skip leg day if you're a squatter. Mm -mm. Although I imagine you skip most of the house parties, because it must be really awkward to be introduced. And uh, the only nice thing the host has to say about you is, uh, well, he lives here. We wish he didn't. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's an uncomfortable situation to be just that unwanted. So I imagine they have a lot of, uh, squatters must have a lot of motivational posters around wherever it is they're squatting to, you know, keep them grounded, committed to the cause. <laughs> Shit like, uh, hang in there, and, uh, don't give up! And, uh, you know, I'd like to counter that with some other inspirational quote I saw recently, which is, uh, every change is an opportunity. Which, you know, with the times, everything's different now, we, uh, we don't know what's happening. But, uh, I happen to see that over a Target dressing room, and, uh, made it lose a little bit of that impact. <laughs> but you know, lo location, location's just everything. Uh, listen to your heart on your grandma's Facebook feed. That's cool. Um, listen to your heart at your doctor's office is alarming. Um, it's about the journey, not the destination. Imagine getting that text from your airline after they told you your uh, connected flight is canceled. And, uh, oh, bananas. And my love. Sexy. On the ground, fucking hilarious. Uh, All right, that's my time. Thank you so much. Alright, give me all the love in the world, god damn it, to this illegal patio where only minorities might get arrested. Fuck yeah, I like how you cover yourself, JW. I get it for JW, who I still call my favorite undercover cop, man. He's on to us, and we know it, you know, yeah? As long as he knows my name is Ken, that's why I got sunglasses underneath my hoodie, man. As long as all you guys know me as Ken, my job is done, you know? Yeah. Maybe get this one kid high right here, you know? Good stuff, welcome.
Hi, my name is Mauricio. I'm one of the few Mexicans that they get put in one of those concentration camps during COVID. Oh. And I love when white people are like, how did you stay out of those camps that Trump built? I was like, I told everybody I was from India. Come on, right? <laughs> yeah, man, I remember one time I was walking down Mission Street at like 3 a.m. This cop just like slowly kept following me. I was wearing a black hoodie, my fault, right? You know? And I love that he's like, Stop right there, what's your name? I'm like, my name is Sunil Punel, and I work for Microsoft. <laughs> then they're like, oh, I'm starting to disturb you. We're about to kick out those three Mexican guys over there, and we hope you enjoy your walk. I'm like, this is a very nice city, man. Look at this way, man. It is, right? I'm from a real Mexico. I'm from Mexicali, Mexico. Oh, right? Right, yeah. The rest of you that didn't say woo, you're racist as fuck, man. And I can't wait till my cholo homies rob you on the way out, you know? Like, because you're still in my body, you know? That's one thing I can't stand, and I hate when people come up to me with their bullshit from their culture. Like, there's a difference between Mexicano taking trabajo versus Chicano with a bouncing car, you know? Right. Let me explain to you this, right? One thing I hate when I visit San Francisco, everyone's like, oh man, the Mexican food is so good! In San Francisco, I'm like, sour cream is not Mexican! Come on, man! This is garbage to me, you know? I had one motherfucker in a giant's hat, he was just like, man, you have got to try a super burrito in San Francisco. I was like, what the fuck is a burrito? I don't know. Oh, I need a dictionary or something, right? I'm like, I just got used to eating pig intestine and a little bit of time, you know? That's how you know when you're Mexican as fuck. And they're like, well, what kind of lowrider do you like? I'm like, what the fuck? He's a lowrider. I don't know this, man. I'm from Mexico. We have a pickup truck with like my cousins in the back ready to go pick fruit. That's what we have, you know? I don't know this, man. Lost the translation, right? All right, everyone, everyone in there, shut the fuck up. I got a dream out here. You know? <laughs> I learn about Twitter, man. <laughs> from Mexico, Mexico, the real ghetto, not this weight like fake ass American shit, right? And Mexico, Mexico, man, it is so hard. You know what? One thing I hate about being in America is that you guys have laws. This is insane, man. <laughs> I don't in Mexico, Mexico, if I can't afford a sandwich, I kidnap an American tourist. It's awesome. It's ridiculous, right? You know? yeah. I like when I go up to like an American tourist. I'm like, oh my god, I'm robbing you. He's like, oh my god, here's my watch. I'm like, you silly pillowcase over the head. Then we put him in a trunk. You know. And I hate when Americans try to blame it on us. They're like, oh, drug cartels and rapists. I'm like, you guys have to understand how many white douchebag motherfuckers you guys sent from a fraternity for your MTV spring break, right? <laughs> then they go to Mexico and they like flip over a truck and they're like, oh! And then my grandpa gets out a shotgun. I'm like, now I have to kidnap you for, to pay for the fucking damages, you know? <laughs> and then these little white kids start screaming, like, oh, well, my mom, like, you better shut the fuck up too, because we eat iguana. <laughs> Motherfuckers better pay up, man. One thing that makes Mexicali so hard and difficult for me is that everybody in Mexicali is actually hot and down to fuck. Crazy, man. Everybody is hot and down to fuck, man. We don't do this dating thing in America. We go to dinner and shit, right? We have sex without condoms to try and have like three kids on day one, man. That's what we do. And they're hot and down to fuck. I hate that all my American friends are like, okay, everybody's hot and down to fuck. Like, what the hell are you doing here? I was like, it's fucking up my game, man. Because I want to sleep with 95% of my cousins. You don't get this shit, right? And they're impressed every time I show up to the quinceanera with a US $20 bill. For it. I got a chance, you know? My name's Ken. One of those crazy things, right? Normally you call uh, an illegal immigrant, well, I used to be, you know, get it the right way, right? I can tell that one of you guys were like, I don't know, the one of the common sense sweaters is just like, oh, NSA right here, you know? <laughs> you can put that cell phone away, motherfucker, because I made it through the system, right? One thing that pisses me off is that you motherfuckers need to quit telling immigrants that you guys are the best. That's part of the problem, right? You guys need to tell like, everybody how horrible you guys actually are to me, man. Because I was smuggled illegally, man. That shit hurt at the beginning, right? I was, like, scared and stuff, too. It was on this windy night in Mexico, in Mexico, where it was a little bit of rain. It's a desert. It never rains, right? And I heard this knock on the door, which was like, is Mauricio here? My mom's like, right there, take him. I was like, what the fuck? He's like, I'm sorry I didn't wash the dishes when you told me to, but I can't reach the sink. Come on, are you serious? You know? And I remember when they had me in the back seat, they're like, I was like, where's my mom? I miss my mom. What is going on? Where's my mom? And they're like, Mauricio, do you want to play a nice little game? I'm like, okay. 
They're like, lie down in the back seat and pretend that you're sleeping. I was like, who do I win? They're like, your freedom. Now shut the fuck up, man. All right, you know? <laughs> like, you're adorable as fuck with that dimple, but we're not going down for that, all right, man? Just chill out, you know? It's crazy. One thing I can't stand is that uh, once you make it to America, I made it to Portland, Oregon, but uh, they're not a low income housing boom, which kind of sucked because then a lot of people from LA came over there and brought their gang culture with them. Damn. Who's here has been jumped? Anyone that did not raise their hand, that's how I know you're a dick. You have not been humble down in life. I've been jumped, man. It's the greatest thing of all time, man. Many times, man. I'll never forget my first jumping, man, because uh, everybody from East LA moved to these low income housing. Uh, projects in uh, Oregon, and then they started beating the shit out of all the immigrant kids in the 90s. It was crazy, right? I remember my first jump being like, ah, and I was like, why are you guys hitting me? Like, because you have to join us, silly. I was like, oh. like, okay, what do I do to join? They're like, well, we have to stop beating you right now and then beat you some more for a few minutes on the on the clock. And I was like, all right, let's do it. Fine, fuck it. So you guys can stop beating me up. Let's do this. Like, Stop your crying. <laughs> to be honest, you brought this on yourself. You're making us look really bad with that Pokemon t-shirt. <laughs> Get some self-respect with a gold crucifix chain and some dickies. Right? One thing that sucks though, once you get jumped, it's like then other people want to beat you up because you're hanging out with them and then you go for another jumping, right? You're like... <laughs> And they're like, you know what? Fuck this, man. I'm done. I'm like, here's my gold crucifix chain. I'm done. We're not friends anymore. It's like, you know what I'm going to do now? I'm going to start hanging out with those white kids on skateboards under the city sun. Listen, for the rest of my life in peace, Limp Biscuit, man. Let's do this, man. Fuck this, man. That was a little bit of Oregon for me right there, you know? Insane, man. Also represent Northwest. I have a lot of Seattle in me. And uh, one of the biggest things that in Seattle, if you're a minority and you're moving up in anything, they call you a sellout if you're not educated and read books and shit. I know that you guys are dumb as fuck down here. You guys are so fucking scared of education that you put your Barnes & Noble in Emeryville. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like in Seattle, it's just down the street, man. You get your pumpkin spice latte, then you get home in time to watch Frasier on syndication. Awesome, man. So I'm going to slow this set down for you guys, all right? So you can meet me halfway. So in Seattle, they always make you to be a protester if you're a minority. I'm finally protesting, man. And this is my fucking protest. Right fucking here, right? These white gloves. I hate when people judge my people. They stand for the people that have always been there for me since childhood, man. Cartoon characters, right? I'm always gonna stand up for them, right? I hate when people disrespect me and they're like, whoa, man, what's up with the white gloves? I'm like, my people, man, you don't get it. And the guy's like, what, Mexicans? I'm like, two town, motherfucker. Come on, man. You know what they I can't stand? You can't be real about defending cartoon characters in America because you're all being brainwashed by this piece of shit human being, fictional character known as Harry Potter. I fucking hate Harry Potter, man. He is the worst of all time, man. He is the whiniest motherfucker in the history of fictional characters of all fucking time, man. I tried reading that book, man, sober too. And my brain was like, you see, if you're on drugs now, this book would make sense, man. Come on, man. Harry Potter's the most worthiest piece of shit of all time. He's like, my aunt and uncle treat me bad. I don't know what to do. I'm like, you have a magic wand, motherfucker. At some point, handle your shit. I don't know, right? I have an orphan cousin in Mexico, Mexico. This motherfucker started crying. He's like, ah, oh, what do I do? I'm like, man, you better sell chick lists to those white people, man. Because Hogwarts is for white people. Or if you're black and you announce Quidditch, then we allow two, right? <laughs> we allow two. That's oh, what memory served, right? Oh, six. 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 All right, I don't know, man. We'll figure that out, man. Let me finish the set first, you know? <laughs> then we'll get down to it, you know? Can do, you know? Yeah, man, that's the one thing I hate, too, that you keep reading this shit, man. When I was, like, trying to read this shit, it's like, it's not even the best school of all fucking time, man. Like, there's, like, a troll wandering through the hallway, man. There's Crips and Bloods between Gryffindor and Slytherin. Meanwhile, Hufflepuff's just trying to get through the day, right? You know? <laughs> they need an extra book called Dumbledore Gets in Trouble with the Board of Education. Man, that's the one. That's the one that we really need, man. Fuck that school, right? And Harry Potter can't do magic in the real world. I found this shit out. He can't do it in the real world while he's studying, right? So let's be real about this shit, man. So he doesn't know anything practical. We need another book that says Harry Potter magically gets hired by Google and kicks out every minority yeah. from their neighborhoods magically. Is this thing on? <laughs> <laughs> Testing, one, two, right? 
I mean, the worst of the worst, man, is that he is not that good at magic. You know who's better at magic than Harry Potter? Mickey Mouse, motherfuckers. American <laughs> Mickey Mouse, man. He is the best, man. And I'm like, you know why he did magically? He got my cousins hired in Anaheim, California, man. <laughs> Yeah, his little cartoon cars are really shiny, man. That's that's the guy, man. He has my back, man. You gotta stand up for what's real, man. The cartoon characters, you know? And I realized this, if you're like Latino or black, you're not gonna get accepted by white people unless you get a fairy tale character that can transfer into cartoons, right? And to this day, I wanna be Mauricio, the whimsical cholo, man. Fuck yeah, that is my dream, you know? Like, I can't wait to look at one guy and be like, hey, Pato, what the fuck you looking at, puto? Nice to meet you, you know? Like, that's the whimsical cholo, right? And I thought about this, man. I wish that they could make a fairy tale character about us. And the reason why there's no fairy tale characters about Mexicans is you can't do a fairy tale character out of my little nephews, you know, in Maine Valley, man. Could you imagine if my little cousins were like Hansel and Gretel? They beat the shit out of that witch, man. And then they start eating the cake, like, man, this is way better than being with our parents. Fuck yeah, man, you know? We made it, you know? Stab them with canes, man. <laughs> like, that's Hansel and Gretel with Mexicans. Could you imagine if my little cousins from Mexico, Mexico, where it's like drug cartel, cartel level, right? If they were in the Chronicles of the Narnia? Like they would walk in and be like, hey, what the fuck's my jacket, man? And then Mr. Tumnus comes up like, we're jumping this fuck right here, you know? And then they would rob him. They would fucking rob him. And then they would sell cocaine to all the little minotaurs, man. You know, because we all know the minotaurs would do cocaine. Or as I like to call them, the Caitlyn Jenner, you know? <laughs> What, the LGBT gets high, man. It's this thing. Oh, my name's Ken. <laughs> my name's Ken. <laughs> ah, it's not any of the stuff. I always like seeing this, man. We never get anything in mainstream media, too, man. And uh, a mainstream media, right? So this is it. The reason why little kids are in cages and stuff, like uh, little Mexican kids, right? The reason why they don't love us, white people, is because they're not telling their kids the truth about mainstream media characters, right? And every white person needs to finally fucking tell their little kids the truth. The Super Mario Brothers are not Italian, man. <laughs> and that way they'll grow up and love us, man. They're not Italian. I've yet to meet an Italian that is that small, right? Went through pipes to get into this country, you know? <laughs> and the first thing they do is they hit on a tall blonde woman named Princess, you know? Who has a, who's like out of their league, right? And has a big bro boyfriend named Bowser who gave her a castle? That's the story of my cousin the god goddammit. Somebody from fucking Nintendo is ripping me off right now, man. One time I did a shitload, I did like 11 Ace of Mushrooms, and I woke up on a fucking bench in Japan town at 3 a.m. And like I looked up at the stars, the next day Mario went to space, man. What the fuck, man, you know? They're not putting us in mainstream media, man. It pisses me off every fucking day. One thing that pisses me off if you're a minority in America, you will never get a president, you will never get acceptance unless you have a Jedi. That is it, man. Jedi is the opening door, man. Remember when black people had Samuel Jackson holding like a pink lightsaber? Yeah. Then they got Obama the next day. And it's kind of feminine, you know? It's like, I get it. I get the symbolism right here, right? It's like, and I want a Jedi. I want a Mexican Jedi so bad. I don't want a fucking making Hollywood shit. I want a fucking Jedi. That is all I want out of this game. And until I get it, the Skywalker family is Mexican as fuck. I am taking them for my people, man. And people are like, oh, really? How is this the Skywalker family Mexican? I'm like, look at the fucking details, man. Like, they live on a shitty planet, right? That's all dusty that looks like my hometown. And they call it that Duin, right? <laughs> Yeah, and his family's like farming and they have no money and the first thing they do is buy a gold toy? Come on, man. It's the Mexican <laughs> stock, man, right? They're like, watch the original. Look at the car that Luke Skywalker's driving. It's a fucking lowrider with the top down, man, you know? And he's cruising around with his best friend, Arturito, you know? Who like whistles and does all the manual labor. <laughs> you know, right? And they're driving around looking for their best friend, Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> Who looks like he's hiding from ice? God damn right, you know? <laughs> and the biggest thing where I know that Skywalker family is Mexican is that he gets abandoned by his dad. He's forced to be raised by his aunt and uncle and eventually he grows up to beat the shit out of his dad. <laughs> That's the same story of my cousin he got the one more fucking time, man. <laughs> And every time we get together for the carne asada, we had the tequila bottle on the knives because the Gato Senior wants a rematch, you know? <laughs> you know, revenge of los carnales, you know? <laughs> like, 
That's what we call it, man. No lightsabers, just knives, man. They are not putting us in mainstream media. They are not doing it. It keeps fucking pissing me off and frustrating me, man. Some people think I'm going nuts, right? Like, Lord of the Rings should have been about us, man. You guys know this, right? D.R. Tolkien is a racist motherfucker, man. It's like, you're telling me that these little guys who love to garden and are trying to cross the border the whole time, right? Isn't about Mexicans? And they love gold rings! Come on, man! <laughs> At some point, we gotta be real about this shit, right? But then I realized that you can't do that, right? With like Mexican lingo in there. Because if it was really about my people, they would sell the ring back to the owner. Be like, hey, Baku, here's the little ring that made we sell coca to the Shire, right? <laughs> and then like the guy just puts on the ring, like, do these fuckers know we're not trying to sell cocaine? Yeah. He's like, well, okay, they'll sell cocaine, but we're definitely making that little fucker a slave, and he'll make us a pyramid, you know? He's like, oh, that's, that's how it would go down, right? It's like, and then sometimes, like the movies that should have been about Mexicans, man, especially Juno, man. Juno should have been about Mexicans, right? Look at the name, right? Juno, remember that movie? It's about this little sad, like, white girl that gets pregnant at the age of 15 in high school. And I'm going to say this, no white girls getting pregnant at the age of 15 in high school. If they're getting pregnant in high school, it's like 18, 16. You know who's getting pregnant at 15 and 12? Mexicans, goddamn, it's like one more time. That movie should have been about us, right? But then I realized that it couldn't have been about us because it wouldn't have been that cute lovey dovey story, right? Where like uh, Michael Sarah and like her, like, the monkey on the back is the latest trend. Oh no, we're pregnant, right? Like it actually would have been like Michael Sarah with a shaved head and like he would have been like, hey puta, that's your problem for not bringing the condom. And then she would have got hit, right? You'd be like, no hospital. <laughs> Alright, that thumbs up, was that, was that the light kind, sir? I think you're doing good, huh? the thumbs up. Good. Yeah, oh, you can close it out, yeah, we got one more. 30 seconds! Alright, right, well, man, this is very right, cool. He definitely is an undercover cop, man. My hands are up here, people. My hands can flutter your universe. But I like doing this, man. I always like doing this. Uh, we're wasting time in America, too. So I always like leaving this, like, personal final statement. I hate that all these protests, motherfuckers, all these things. None of these things are going to work, okay? I was on H Street one time, and I was having a stressful thing on the phone. He's like, you know why you're being stressful right now? Mercury's in retrograde. Mm. I'm like, damn, man, can you just order your fucking piece of shit latte so I can get to fucking work, right? And don't talk to me ever again, man. You know? That's how I recovered, man. That's my retrograde, right? None of this shit is going to work, man. And I'm going to tell you this, man. Like, the things that I used to, like, hate, I now love, right? And on that note, I don't think Scientology is that bad, man. You get what I'm saying, right? <laughs> I was having a bad day one time in downtown Market Street, and this Christian guy just goes like this, you're going to hell. I was like, damn, that's pretty fucking rude, man. I was like, and was I looking at those gap jeans that long? Come on, man. This is ridiculous, right? Yeah, and I kept walking down the street and the Scientology guy goes like this, you seem stressed, I want to help you with that. I was like, yo, that's a nice guy right there, right? And I hate when my friends are like, if you join Scientology, you can never talk to your family. I don't talk to my family right now, I fucking hate them, man. And they're like, okay, but if you join Scientology, they're going to put you in a center where you can never leave. I'm like, if I'm homeless to avoid sucking dick for crack, I'm taking the mattress for the Scientology building. Drink some fucking Kool-Aid and have a good time, man, you know? And if I join Scientology and I brainwash all of you, I'm in a movie with Tom Cruise tomorrow, man, right? Where I play an Arab terrorist, you know? In Mission Impossible 10, man. And I need the fucking money because I come from poverty, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I hate when motherfuckers look at me and they're like, but they believe this crazy alien shit, like alien spirits are in our body. I'm like, prove it, prove it right now that they're wrong. And they're like, because I know a thing or two about aliens. You know why? Because I get molested by them every night at 3 a.m. It's fucked up. I have the worst apartment in downtown San Francisco, man. I hate that one of those fuckers didn't use a condom. So I feel like I'm pregnant right now. That fucker's just getting ready to shoot out of my belly. I'm like, no, oh, I can't afford you right now. Ah, oh, the air is expensive. He's like, nah, nah, nah. I was like, I love you too, Mauricio Jr. You know? <laughs> and I have to take him to Golden Gate Park to eat humans, you know, just to make sure it's me, right? <laughs> I would love it if he spits out and I was like, oh, nah, nah, nah. I was like, oh, you're not fooling yet, son? Let's go to the marina next, right? All right, too soon, right? My name's Ken. <laughs> <laughs> right. My name is Ken. The hell with you guys. Take it easy, posers. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, you got Coco Fricio. And his extensive anthropological research on how <laughs> American stories in the classic sense, 
Are all stolen from the heritage of Mexicans becoming immigrants to America? <laughs> 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 that's what I'm saying. I'm You know, I, uh, yes. Very, yes. And uh, is this thing on? One, two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. Welcome next to our Tiki. Thing. Is that uh, is that thing that's should be? Is that okay? Uh, well, when is that okay? <laughs> Technical difficulties. We're back at you. Hey, hey. Happy, 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 happy birthday! 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 <laughs> I had so many thoughts when that when I was when everything was going down that I want to introduce the next. Kobe in to enter the ring of the pain fire at the Tiki Let's give it up for Sam! Oh my god, who is that? Is that Sammy? Oh my god. Oh my god, I was, I was chosen by the ring of propane. I swear to god, I had no idea. Uh, give it up for your host, J.W. Blunts, up in the house. We're on his roof. We can clap for the guy. Uh, yeah, give it up for the other comedians. Crystal, that set was bananas. Yeah. Mauricio, uh, who wore it best between you and Michael Jackson? You definitely made me go hee hee a little more. And give it up for yourselves. Come on. Thank you. Yeah. Supporting live comedy. Uh, or virtual comedy or whatever. Uh, I promise I'm not reading notes. There are hot singles in my area. Uh, so I'm just messaging with Yolanda while I'm doing the multitasking. Uh, anyway, all right. Well, since COVID started, I've gotten a lot better at cooking, which means that I know exactly how long to leave the hot pocket in so that it's just, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Fine. Because fine is the best that a hot a hot pocket can possibly be. Sober. But uh, I don't limit myself to just hot pockets. You know, like people fuck around with like sourdough. And I thought that was basic, but I was wrong because the yeast fermentation process is inherently acidic. So jokes on me. Up top, chemistry yeah, jokes. Science. Yes, this guy gets it. Science. Uh... But no, not just hot pockets. I make all kinds of cuisine. Italian, Chinese, lean. <laughs> but <laughs> unless I'm cooking for a lady, because I don't want to insult her with something like lean cuisine. I'm talking nothing less than 800 calories for my baby. <laughs> you know? I'm talking top shelf of the freezer. I'm talking, I spare no expense under six ninety nine. dollars uh, But when I'm alone, I like to cook other types of meals. I, true story, the rest of the set is all true, by the way. This is all true. I'm going to stand over here in the spotlight so you can tell that this is really true. Uh, when I'm by myself, I make meals with names like, this is a real meal, uh, Hungry Man Jack. XL Beef Roast, which based on the name alone is clearly for straight men like me. And it had me wondering, like, you know, like what, what other kind, it was delicious, what other kinds of like meals could this company possibly come up with? Like uh, sweaty uh, caveman uh, Neanderthal keto stroganoff? Because they know how much I love stroganoff on my couch by myself. Uh, or tube steak for your mouth hole. You know? This guy, this guy's eating tube steak for your mouth hole. Uh, anyway, hey, happy Pride Month. Give it up. Give it up for everybody. May we all find the hungry man of our dreams. Or a hungry woman or a hungry person or anything outside or within or uh, between that spectrum. Maybe I'll find the hungry person of our dreams. Uh, 
I love when I like cook one of those Hungry Man Jack XL Beef Roast dinners and you just like get it out of the microwave and there's that plastic stuff on top and you peel it back and that molten liquid water just goes like <laughs> Sorry, we're gonna need to clean this microphone afterwards. I don't know the COVID cleaning procedures, but it goes <laughs> And you're like, oh, mm, this is gonna be a moist one. I like it. Because before that, all you can do is like, if it says don't remove the plastic, the only thing you can do, it's like a, it's like a first date where you can kind of like, you can't take the plastic off, but you can like feel the potatoes on top of the plastic just to kind of like see how firm they are. That's all you get. Or you put a slit in it, like maybe like an inch, just an inch and a half. <laughs> that's, that's how you cook them. Uh, so anyway, I got, I got so confident, this is a true story, I got so confident in my microwaving abilities that I bought a microwave with a broken time display on it. It's true. Bought a microwave, no time. So you couldn't tell how much time was left on the microwave because I was like, I don't need that. I can practice microwaving by feel. And I don't mean sticking my finger in the middle of the dish to see if it's like cold or not. And like, mm, no, it needs three more minutes. I'm talking, I could feel the microwaves in the air. Because this shit just seeps, it leaks radiation. Uh, probably not good for me. Thank God the hot pocket's on. It balances out. Uh, I was trying to cook these foods by microwaving, feeling that shit in the air. And another true story. My microwave caught fire on Wednesday and almost burned my house down. <laughs> I don't have a microwave anymore, it's, it literally caught fire. <laughs> and, uh... Oh, Yolanda's messaging me, hold on. What did she say? Oh, yes. Oh, I can't tell you what she said. But I can tell you that when I cook this thing... All right, you don't need a timer. The, oh, the cops are here. No, they're not, never mind. <laughs> Am I the cops? I don't know. No. <laughs> Someone in the audience called me a narc. I thought we talked about this. Agent. <laughs> Agent. Agent Beauregard. <laughs> We're undercover, okay? Quit fucking. Listen, your blow guy could mean any number of things, okay? <laughs> we out here. We're only a couple blocks from the Castro. I just talked about Hungry Man XL beef roast. You're over here talking about your blow guy. We need to exchange numbers. Uh, just because straight guys talk about exchanging recipes. Uh, but no, for real. I, I, I bought a microwave, broken time display, the shit caught fire. It was enough to turn my orange chicken into black chicken. Turn hunger into hanger. And turn my meal into a almost uh, an insurance payout to my landlord. And uh, it almost turned home cooking into home cooking. And I cooked my fucking home. I was convinced that I could like cook a meal or just by putting it on top of the microwave and just leaving it there. But that would take at least another minute. And who has the time? Just another fucking time for that. Uh, like it, this, this microwave is so shitty. It just seeped microwave radiation, and it just like made my kitchen into a, a larger, weaker microwave. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Microwave radiation, so tiny. But it fucking melted my chicken dish, and it, it turned, it made my kitchen smokier than fucking Wiz Khalifa barbecuing some ribs on a street corner in Beijing. Like, I came back and I couldn't see. I was like, yeah, God. And that's also when I learned that your landlord is not legally obligated to provide you with a fire extinguisher. So this is not a joke. To you watching at home, where on many screens and here in the audience, it's not a joke. Buy a fire extinguisher. If you don't own one, get one. If you're not sure, 
definitely get one because you're irresponsible. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, get a fire extinguisher. That's not a joke. But I hope there's a fire extinguisher here because this set is fuego. That is a joke. Tiki torch. Give it up yourselves. <laughs> up top again. My science guy. This is my fucking guy. This is my fucking guy. Uh, my girlfriend was like, how did you manage to cook your own microwave? Like, didn't you just go get it after the three minutes were done? Because I found out, oh, by the way, yeah, the difference between three minutes and 30 minutes is about 30 minutes. <laughs> and you're like, what? <laughs> JW Bloods loves time jokes. And, and uh, yeah, why didn't you go get it after the three minutes? And I was like, first off, it, the direction said let it stand, which we all know means just let it sit in your microwave for a couple minutes. <laughs> Uh, and because she was like, oh, don't you want it fresh out of the microwave? <laughs> fresh out of the There's no such thing as fresh out of the microwave. This shit was made at least three months ago, depending on where you got it from. So, yeah, that's how I almost burned my house down. Uh, uh, but, so, since I don't have a, a microwave anymore, I was thinking about a lot of other kitchen appliances that I got. Delana's blowing my phone up right now. She's giving me a lot of uh, joke ideas. Uh, I was thinking about my blender, because I was like, all right, if I can't make things in the microwave, at least I can make them in my blender, right? And then I was like, what is a blender? It's just a jug with blades and a motor. And I was like, that shit is really fucking cool. Humans love adding blades and motors to things. <laughs> To, uh, to make them cooler. So, like, think about it. Someone was like, they saw Frozen Pond, and they were like, that seems really dangerous. I probably shouldn't walk on that. But if I put blades on my shoes, then I could probably go on it. That's how ice skates were made. And then someone saw that, and they were like, bet if I took that, added a motor to it, and a couple Red Bull stickers, now you got a snowmobile. <laughs> and that shit is yeah, take a chair and add blades and a motor to it. Got a helicopter. <laughs> Probably not a safe one, but a helicopter nonetheless. <laughs> RP Kobe, too soon? Okay, yes, too soon. Uh, take a boat, add blades and a motor to it. You've got friends. Because the only thing better than having a boat is having a friend with a boat. Uh, and. <laughs> Uh, humans love adding blades and motors to shit, which is uh, a way to make things really cool. And you know who also loves blades and motors and makes shit really cool? Keanu Reeves. Thank you. Yes, I heard it. I heard it. I've been told. I've been told I look like uh, like a a. Kirkland brand Keanu Reeves, <laughs> but I prefer to think of Keanu as just more of an expensive Sam Warren. Uh, you know, like, and I and I try to like compare, like, I'm up here doing this stand up, I was like, Keanu has done some things too, and I'm like, you know, he he was Johnny Utah in Point Break. I'm just like Johnny Mormon Settlers, and he was he's like John Wick. And I'm like John Soy Wax Votive Camo. And <laughs> he's like, uh, oh, oh yeah, his name is Keon Wu. I'm like just Keon Meh. Uh, I don't know if anyone's seen the movie Constantine. He's Constantine. I'm just occasionally team. Not as consistent. Um, but I hope that we can all just continue to add blades and motors to things and make them cool. Mauricio, on behalf of all white people, I apologize, we suck. You hear that, white people? Yeah. Yeah. Apologize we yourself. suck. Validation. We suck, white people. Yeah. I bet they don't agree. ALM. They don't. Uh, that's all I got. So give it up for your next comedian. And your host. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, give it up for Sam. Thank you. Sam Weiss, Sam Weiss, across the Shire, <laughs> to the mountain of Mordor for this shit. 
the fire spoken for him from it to come to nail the comedy night. Yes, and nail it he did. I feel like, you know, in, you know this is the, in the best way, like, you know, if Cali was just a little more Asian, you'd have been better looking. <laughs> Thank you, bro. <laughs> Thank you. Got you. Got Thank you. you. I'm going to kiss you. <laughs> it's funny. And also, hail to, give it up for the king of all white people. On the behalf of all white people, I apologize. How does <laughs> someone do that? I'm Jewish, I can't be like, hey, guess what? On behalf of all Jews around the fucking planet who are different, and literally in every country in the world. You're fucking walking down hot in Hong Kong, somebody told me. This fucking, this old guy with a long white beard, he said, you know what I guess I'm gonna tell you? It's the craziest thing, Jews are everywhere. I said, really? He said, yeah. I was walking down the street in fucking Hong Kong, I turned a corner to the fucking synagogue there. I was like, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Anyways, I speak for myself, you speak for you, you speak for everybody that thinks you're funny, so that's gonna be a lot of people. Thank you for the support. <laughs> Next, coming to the stage in the Tiki Kabanda. The Indian Hanoi Lounge of Comedy. The Fire Speaks, a name that we all know as Jan Duransky! Hey, yo. Hold on a second. I don't trust that guy. Uh, you know. <laughs> that guy is on stage. I'm like, hold on. Okay, one second. <laughs> I literally have like a microphone condom. <laughs> Where is it? One, can I? Hey, uh, sketchy dude, can you hand me my purse? <laughs> can you my yeah, purse? sure. Oh, I'm gonna say it. Oh, yeah. oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> ketamine. Hold on. No, I wish there was ketamine in here. No, they just said. Hold on. Oh, yeah. This is fucking. It's gonna be so worth it because I just want you guys to know that. I literally, some, I touch the microphone in my face sometimes, and every fucking time I do it, it's it's forever uh, haunts me while I'm trying to do comedy. Look at this, check this out. Oh yeah, now I'm touching it, I'm touching it to my face, and I don't have herpes that I know. Um, whoa, what was that? Come on in, sir, have a seat. Um, so, wow, this has been a show. Right? Or yeah. I, you classify this as a show. Yeah. My name is Jen Dronsky. I'm a comedian. Um, about me, I am. Uh, I'm half gay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Half Latina. Um, you know, on the mother's side, both of those. Um, I, I, I'm what you what you might commonly call a vanilla bean. <laughs> yeah. I'm oh, sorry, Venetia. Um, so I I have a white dad. Um, I'm Mexican, but I've got a white dad, which means I'm just Mexican because I'm a woman. Um, uh, also known as gentrified from inside the home. Yeah. Um, it's really weird having a white dad and then growing up to be a giant Latina lady because uh, he's always like. He's always just giving the most wrong information, you know? He's just like, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. And I'm like, no hablo bootstraps, papa. <laughs> um, yeah, really. I'm like, I've got high heels. That's what the world gave me. Um, so I, God, you guys, I have like, I have a lot of things wrong with me. Let me just start off with them. <laughs> Uh, so I have dyslexia. Um, yeah, I do. I have dyslexia, and it can make sexting really hard. Cause like, there's a really big difference between I fucking love. <laughs> see, no, I fucking, I love fucking you, and I fucking love you. <laughs> and this happened. I really did text this to someone. Uh, you know, one can make a man come, and the other will make him go. <laughs> Yeah, but also, like, a shortcut, if you want to just have a one-night stand, tell a man you love him. <laughs> if you feel like the guy's getting clingy, just feel like I love you. Or, or you can say, I love that about you. They can't even handle that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have hyperhidrosis. Um, so what this means is, like, I'm just really sweaty all the time. It doesn't matter why or when or how. Just super sweaty. Um, and the other day, uh, this gentleman, very attractive man, um, he and I, we were like, we were hanging out, having a great time, and he said, 
I could, I bet I could pick you up. And I was like, mm, no, okay, no, no, no. <laughs> I haven't been picked up since I was 10 years old. Uh, 220 pounds, I don't, you're not gonna be able to pick me up. And he's like, I could pick you up. Be like, from under your arms, like, like a child. He picked me up and lifted me to his eyesight. And I'm 5'10", 6'2", in heels. And I was like, fuck, I didn't know there was more than this. Like, didn't know that there was high, you know. He lifted me to his eyesight, we locked eyes, and I was like, oh my god, are we in love? Like, is this it? Um, and then he put me down, and he looked at me, and leaned in, and he's like, wow, I didn't expect my hands to be so wet. <laughs> like, he like, stared at his hands. <laughs> so, uh, I'm single. That was not our meet cute. We're not in love. We're not together forever. Um, yeah, it's been really weird. The pandemic. Has uh, anyone else like single or a person, a woman, in after the pandemic? Everyone is just trying to fuck everything. Have you noticed this? Everybody is just on each other, trying to fuck. Like people come up to me, like people who have no business coming up to me. You know, I'm like, I'm used to homeless people harassing me and catcalling me. But like people in bars, like, can I buy you a drink? I'm like, no, go away. Like, you, please don't talk to me. And then they're like, everyone's just trying to fuck so hard. And it's like, I don't know if you know this, but like coming up to me super like aggro and being like, what's up? I haven't been out in a year. You want to fuck? And it's like, no, I'm sure that even if you had been out that whole year, you'd be shit at fucking. And now you're telling me you haven't fucked in a year and a half? No, I don't want to fuck that. Like, like, hey, I've got some fucking uh, gum that I left in my car for like a year. You want that? No, I don't want that. Dry out. It's not going to have any flavor. Um, yeah. So... I have a cat. <laughs> Just talking about you, anyone else a cat person? Yeah. Yeah, ladies, cat person. <laughs> I have a cat. Um, I have a cat specifically because the SBCA sent me an email telling me there was a sale on cats. Really, they did. They were like, any cat, $20, take it home. And I was like, fuck yeah, sweet, send me annual cat sale. This is for me. Um, you know, then I get in there and it's like clear why all the cats are on sale. It's like every cat had something wrong with it. You like pick one up, you're like, this one's, oh, there's like cat missing an eye, there's cat missing a paw. Like, it's like shopping at Ross for cats, y'all. Like, side seems wildly askew. Um, yeah. I, so I get this cat, she has this much of a tail, really, $20, she can't beat that deal. Um, I get this cat home, and my uh, my girlfriend at the time, yeah, I told you I was not gay. My girlfriend at the time, she's like, hey, I want to harness train this cat. She means like she wants to put it on a leash and like walk it around in front of people. And uh, you know, we lived in San Francisco. You know, we were in the gay district, the, the lesbian gay district, which is the mission. Um, <laughs> And it's like, even living in San Francisco, we still got looks from people, like walking around holding hands, like, hey, look, lesbians, you know? <laughs> and I just feel like adding a cat to that situation was just gonna blow people's fucking minds. Like, they were just gonna be like, mm, they're turning that cat gay. <laughs> they're on their way to the Folsom Street Fair. It's their third. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, um, I got engaged uh, to my my girlfriend. We, we did. We, yeah, we made. Yeah, we, we got the cat. We we made it official. <laughs> really, that did happen. Um, and let me just tell you about our engagement story because it's just a really sweet little story. Um, so we're making love like lesbians do. You know. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so we get along, you know, just like, mm, it's getting in there, you know. Um, and then I pulled my finger out, and there was a ring on it, y'all. <laughs> yeah, she put a ring in her box. 
<laughs> um, yeah, it turned out she was just cheating on me with a married lady. <laughs> but finders keepers, bitch. Oh, no. Not right now. Possession is nine tenths of the law or something. Um, yeah. Um, so I'm single and ready to be <laughs> um, But, yeah. <laughs> it is still true, we still do kosher cat. Because <laughs> lesbians, we. Here's the best, the best thing about being a lesbian is that you never ever break up, you just gain a friend. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and a lot of cats. <laughs> yeah, should we co on a cat? Um, I told my friend about rescuing, the, like getting a cat from a rescue, and he was like, wow, you know, one time my parents and I rescued a gardener snake from our backyard. And I was like, what? <laughs> no, you fucking didn't. You just took an animal out of a natural habitat, you put it in a fucking jar with some sticks and leaves in it. You didn't rescue anything, okay? That'd be like if I went to the mall, kidnapped a person, put them in my basement, threw in a mannequin and some sweaters and was like, remember this stuff from where I took you from? I'm rescuing you. We're safe now. Shh. And like, slam the door and stab some holes in it. Breathe. Yeah, like, snakes don't need rescuing. <laughs> right? Like, I mean, okay, cats and dogs, we inbreed them purposefully because we think it's cute. We're like, oh no, your face came all smushed and you can't breathe and you're like, have brain problems? Oh, let's breathe that more and get more of these shitty little animals. Oh, you're so cute. Look at your little legs, they're all short. That's not natural. You're a fucking predator and I made you look adorable and messed up. Like, those animals need rescuing, okay? <laughs> Like, no one, there's no such thing as like a teacup boa constrictor. <laughs> I a teacup boa constrictor in my purse. <laughs> so you know, bitch, it's a baby snake, let go. <laughs> like, nothing could happen to a snake besides dying, I think, that it would need our help. <laughs> like, think about it, really. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, God, I, I do feel bad about owning a cat. Um, you know, like, I, I love my cat, and I just like I do anything and everything for this little asshole. You know, I'm just like, you want you want food? You want you want me to open the door? Like she just yells at me, she's like, Meow! and I'm like, okay, and I'm just try, I'm just guessing and doing things, and like I just I feel so bad that like because okay, I feel like I'm like North Korea in the 70s Whoa. when they were just like straight up kidnapping people from all around the world and being like. Hey, come live here, and they're like, and you all, and by that, like they literally kidnap people from around the world to make nice. North Korea look diverse. This is so genius. Nice. And they're like, and then those people were like, yes, we love living here. Thank you for my Escalade, Mr. Ill. <laughs> like, like they would be like, we give you all the Hennessy and a fucking villa, but all you can have, like you can have everything you want except for freedom. And I feel like that's what I offer to my cat. <laughs> I'm like, I'll give you anything! <laughs> Except for like, I don't know, a chance to go meet up with anybody you knew from your past or like any recognition of where you are in this world. <laughs> like, I open the door and I'm like, try to leave, bitch. Where are you gonna go? I've moved ten times. <laughs> you don't know anything. Look at your shit little tail. <laughs> You're not going anywhere. But she knows it. So it's like a really bad relationship now, I think. It's like really old married couple. We're just like codependent, but you know, what else are we gonna do? And the kids went away to college a long time ago too. You guys have parents? <laughs> you guys, anyone got parents here? Yeah, yeah. Fuck parents. Yeah, I know. I have parents. Um, my parents. Uh, this is not even a joke. They got divorced when I was a little kid, and then they got remarried <laughs> to each other. Why? They did that. And I was like, damn it, I thought this was, God, fuck it. Oh, I was so mad. Like when they got divorced, I was like, yes. And then they got back together with each other. Um, they're divorced again, but still together. <laughs> yeah, I know, I love that about them. They really make me think that love is real. Um, oh God. So, what else about me? Um, 
I, I smoke a lot of weed sometimes. And I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> smoke a lot of weed. And uh, it's really fun that weed is legal out here in California. Because um, it's not legal everywhere. You forget that. <laughs> like, I, I went to Houston not like, like three fucking days ago. I was in Houston. And I was out at this bar and I was like talking to this bartender. And I'm like, hey, where can I get some like weed? And he's like, shh. Like, I'm like this guy's doing cocaine, like front and center. <laughs> and I say weed, and everyone's like, shh, 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 shh. And then they're like, this guy's like, you gotta go to this karaoke bar. I'm like, okay, sounds promising. He's like, it's called Glitter. And I'm like, okay, it's Pride Month, let's go. Like, I'm like, yeah, let's go to Glitter. I show up, and I'm the only white person there that they know of. That they're, you know, I'm the only white perceived person. And I was like, okay. And I walk in, and everyone's like, why are you here? Like immediately, like three people come up to me, or like, like three different, like the three wise men of drug dealers were like, "What are you looking for? Why are you here, lady? Like you're wearing a fucking pencil skirt with a silk blouse tucked in. Like what are you doing here?" And I'm like, "I'm looking for drugs." And someone's like, "Yeah, yo, weed. You want Molly or pills?" And I was like, "No, I want weed." And it was like, just like walks off. Like, I like guess the worst Bachelor episode ever like i just chose the wrong person i chose like a virgin you know <laughs> she gets it why is there always a virgin on the bachelor like it's so fucking gross it's like come on don't why are you even telling people that that's sad yeah there always is a virgin on the bachelor now i'm just rambling you know what i just want to say that you guys are nice people um yeah <laughs> Yeah, you're nice people. I just want to say that. But I did want to like really hurt someone's feelings tonight, so oh. somebody step forward. So oh, no. Oh, uh, hold on. This guy has no feelings. Come on. You can't take it. He's on so many drugs. Whoa. Oh, here you go. You know, I've been there. I was gonna say you do look like a friend that was a drug dealer that died uh, recently. Uh, yeah, hey y'all. Uh, it's true. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, this ZZ Top motherfucker's making me sad because he looks like my dead drug dealer friend. Oh shit. R.I.P. The biggest in the... <laughs> Everyone give a moment of silence for Frosty Nuts. Really. He's a great guy. His real name was Jamie. Um, he didn't die of a drug overdose, which I honestly was pretty like, what? <laughs> like, because we were all like, he, he died of a... He died... <laughs> His appendix burst. Isn't that crazy? Like, you know, you know when you like think you know how someone's gonna die? Because you've known them for a while. And yeah. then like world's like, mm, psych bitch! <laughs> now you feel extra bad, you dumb hoe. <laughs> You're like, I do, I do. No. <laughs> Somehow I do feel bad. It's, Jesus. Yeah. Jesus uh, Christ. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, I really thought this was going to go better than it is. Um, no, thank you. Yeah. I, I say the same thing, baby, about you. Um, so, I work in an office. I don't know if you can tell. Um, yeah, I know, right? Offices. Who here loves working in an office and being a woman? Not, none of us, none of us, no one. Uh, I work in an office, it's fucking just, it's fucking nightmare, like, I literally got told by my boss, he was like, do you like working here? Like, he asked me that to my face, like, like I, and I was like, yeah, no, no, bro, I don't, it's a fucking prison that I, I'm forced to show up to for 40 hours a week so you can micromanage me because you don't have your own fucking children, god damn it, <laughs> fuck off, Dennis. Um, no, he asked me if I liked working there. No, I don't like working anywhere. I don't like working. I want money to just happen to me. No, who likes working? Who's like, hmm, love working? Like, <laughs> no. And he also told me I need to smile more. Yeah, he's like, maybe you can just try to show it a little. Like, he said it in coded words. Um, but yeah, I, I, I fucking, I have, I mean, I hate this job, but I have health insurance. 
Yeah? Yeah, that's pretty much it. I have health insurance. I love the job because I have health insurance. Um, and uh, I, I literally went to the doctor for the first time in like my whole life. <laughs> And uh, the doctor, like, was do they had to do everything. They were like, I felt like I was getting like, like a whole like reading, like I was getting tested for everything. They're like, okay, let's get all your blood, let's get all your like spit, all your like, fucking. They're just like checking every orifice. <laughs> um, my doctor uh, ended up being a woman I partied with once. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Does this ever happen to anybody? No. You ever just show up and meet your doctor and you're like, hey doc, oh shit, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah! <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> it was really awkward and I had to like pretend to be professional. I'm like, yes, yes. She's like, your, 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 your panels look good. Um, come back in a week and I'm gonna give you a pap smear. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> you, my friend, my super cool new best friend, uh, you're gonna look into my vagina with a pe with a fucking flashlight? <laughs> like no 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 no. <laughs> That's a job for a stranger. <laughs> Not my best friend and party doctor. Um, this literally happened. It really freaked me out. I didn't know what to do. Like think about this. If you went to your doctor and they were like a friend, sort of an acquaintance, and then they were like, let me look inside your fucking holes bro like <laughs> it fucking made me so i couldn't i didn't i was so like anxious like for weeks and i was like how can i do what can i do to like break the tension what can i do this an icebreaker icebreaker so i decided that i would take this very tiny cat figurine um and like put it in my vagina <laughs> So that when she went to examine me, I could be like, see anything interesting down there? And then she'd be like, Jennifer! And I'd be like, that's for you, party doctor Rebecca, keep it! <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then she'd be like, you have HPV. And I'm like, don't I know it? <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, I also, <laughs> don't worry, like, I was going to put it in one of those like, quarter machine bubbles, so it'd be like fun. Um, <laughs> like I didn't, I literally, and here's the fucked up thing is like the receptionist is also my friend so she really tried to convince me to do it. And I almost did but I didn't do it because then I got like scared that she would just like not mention it. <laughs> you know, like she just like put that aside like, like it's San Francisco, you know, <laughs> and whatever. Just, and then, like, she thinks that I'm the kind of person that looks like loses tiny cat figurines in my vagina. Like some kind of fucking novice. I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, like uh, I run a tight ship, okay? I know what's in my vagina and what's not in my vagina. I, have, I keep a full inventory. <laughs> oh, Lord. Um, the funniest thing is, like, I, I used to, like, give out those cat figurines after the show. <laughs> they are real figurines that I don't have anymore. <laughs> um, so, God, I have a sister. Anybody else? You guys got siblings? Yeah, who here is, like, the shittiest sibling? Oh, first. Yeah, yeah, come on. Yeah. I have a sister, she's better than me. I know it, we know it, she knows it. Like, like she's always doing things, like to show me up, like, like have a job, pays her bills on time. And I do this for an ice cream cone. JW, where are you? Give me that ice cream cone, JW. You want that ice cream cone? <laughs> the copper one, it's in the freezer. Oh, uh, yeah, thank you. He knows what I'm talking about. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, fuck yeah, baby. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Hold on a second. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck you guys. These are mine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, go ahead. Have one. Sorry. Sorry. Low blood sugar. <laughs> I wish I could just say that. Like, low blood sugar. I'm gonna fucking kill you! <laughs> Sorry, low blood sugar. Definitely not undiagnosed uh, bipolar disorder. <laughs> yeah, I have a sister. She's better than me. 
and like I try to like talk to her and we try to get along like oh it's so fucking hard uh, like we were having a conversation on the phone the other day and she was like you know Jen I like this doctor at my hospital but he's never been in a serious relationship so I just like wonder what's wrong with him you know and I'm like totally <laughs> Because the other day I was trying to go to this show and I was looking for parking for like an hour. And then I found a spot right in front. And I was like, what's wrong with it? You know? Like, like is there a sign I can't see? Is it hidden in a tree? What's this discoloration of the curb made? I just drove away crying, you guys. I will not be hurt again. I respect me. Anyone else try to have a car in San Francisco? Yeah. You know, the cool thing about having a car is that it does kind of bankrupt you, but eventually it is the place you can live. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, I went to school, uh, I, went to, I went to college uh, for fashion design. Yeah. I learned things like the difference between a button up and a button down. You know the difference? You want to know the difference? Hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> you want to make a fucking payment on one of my default student loans? I'll tell you the difference after the show. Um, yeah, like I, I went to like school for fashion design, and like I feel like I went from having like a possible career uh, to doing stand-up comedy. <laughs> so it was like I was like, hey, you know what? love this shitty shack tent I'm living in, but you know what? What if I just like move into my car? <laughs> like, you know, like what if I just like go from having a stable place to live to my fucking car? <laughs> so yeah, that's what stand-up comedy is like for everyone who wants to make a lot of money. <laughs> I really want to throw something on this fire. God damn it, JW, what is this? S'mores. S'mores? No, no, I know, but like, he's just, every time I come here, he has some other kind of crazy bullshit happening. Like, like hey, can I just get all the women over here? We can just do some Wiccan crap. Sorry. I'm going to ask, like, I'm like, everyone else is dismissed. Women, you stay. The show is over. The show is done. Um, but I'm going to hold the microphone and continue to talk all night. <laughs> All right, okay, let me see if I have one more joke to get out of here. Um, oh shit, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh shit, yeah. Um, so uh, at my office, uh, people always try to do diet culture. <laughs> They're always like, Jenny, I'm doing this new diet. You want to try it with me? What you're going to do is you're going to take Cayenne pepper, lemon juice, maple syrup, mix that together with water, drink it for 10 days. <laughs> you want to try this with me? I'm like, uh, no, Jessica. I'm not a fucking Mexican hummingbird. Get your spicy sugar water out of my face. <laughs> I like myself. <laughs> and I like eating. All right, everyone, I hope you like yourselves. Uh, yeah. 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 Give it up to this guy. You can talk, baby. Come on out here. Yeah, super bad. <laughs> All right, give it up for Jeff and Russ. Yay. Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. That's awesome. From like a very woman, like losing her like ring, her, 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 her wedding ring in, the, in her pussy, and then fucking the toxoplasmosis. You know, I just wonder what's up with cat people. You know, you walk in and be like, ah, there's some shit. I can smell it. Makes me happy. I don't know why. Let's have a disease that cats. Dude, some people you do the rats and you know, like catch me about that. <laughs> and I, a couple slap backs. What the fuck? And then, what else? Okay, so, we're closing it up. Let's give it up for the man who put this on for us in the fires of Mordor, as the ravens called down to the fogs of Oceanshire and the Celsius district. JW! <laughs> Thank you guys. I'm not, a, I'm not a comedian, I'm more of a guitar player, but I just wanted to uh, do a couple of one-liners. Yeah. 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 Coming out, thank you my neighbors. People cool after 10 o'clock, thank you neighbors. 
I know, I gotta, I know where all the camera angles are. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know the, like the difference between a vegan and a vegetarian? What? One of them has friends. Oh, 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 shit. And uh, the one time a truck driver is a rock star. When he's hollow notes. Oh! Thank you guys for coming out. This is the first <laughs> event. <laughs> These are my two liners. <laughs> yeah, thank you everyone for coming out. Thanks for tuning in, everyone that's tuning in. Somebody's mom is very proud, I saw. Yeah, nice. yeah there's going to be plenty of fun. Me chilling out here. Okay. Get some David yeah. Bowie going. David Bowie, David Bowie. All right, David Bowie, David Bowie, keep it going. Have a stars to Oh, we put that out of your face. Did you decide what it's like, Sam? Alright, are we done?